Well, I want to welcome you to today's broadcast. This is going to be a powerful, insightful time with the Lord as we are going to be talking about unleashing the power of the war room and unlocking prophetic intercession in heavenly places. Please let me know where you're tuned in from. If you're watching us on YouTube, God bless you. I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you're watching on Rumble, God bless you. And those that are on Facebook, we love you so much. We know that God is going to speak to you tonight as we dive into this time Uh, really of prophetic revelation and what God is doing in the heavenlies. Please, again, let me know where you're tuned in from. And if you will do me a tremendous favor, let's break the algorithm on uh, the social medias by sharing. Sharing is caring, and it helps us uh, to get the word out of what God is saying through us. Also, I want to say this. We've been having a lot of just... um, Uh, scammers in the comment sections. Listen, I'm not on Telegram. Those people are not employees of Destiny Encounters International. Please do not fall for any of that. If you see someone say, I work for Charlie and he has a word for you, follow me to this link on Telegram. My friends, the only place that you can find me is on my personal socials that are here, whether you see me on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. I only have... Uh, specific places that I am at. And if you need prayer, prayer at destinyencounters.com uh, is where you get your prayer request at. Uh, no other site, no other place. I don't DM people. It's, you know, I don't ask um, for finances, uh, for, uh, you know, orphanages and None of that. If you want to give to the ministry to help us with our crusade evangelism, you give it in the uh, description box. There's a link that you can sow a seed. Or you can go to destinyencounters.com, go under the donate tab and give there. But there's no other place. I'm not asking for money on Telegram. And the those that are in the comment section that are pretending that they work for me, they don't. They're scammers. Don't follow them. But tonight we're going to be talking about unleashing the power of the war room. Now, some of you remember a prophetic word that I gave in August of uh, 21, uh, 2022. And I want to read it again, and then I want to also um, read a word that the Lord gave me just several days ago, and then we're going to get into the teaching. But I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you are in the midst of a redefinition of the church. Watch for my hand upon fresh movements emphasizing new battle plans for the ecclesia. My church is entering an age of militancy and spiritual confrontation. Wow, are we not there right now? A new global prayer movement is about to emerge. Remember, this is August 21, 2022, when the Lord told me this. Then I saw angels with swords drawn releasing, um, f- re- released from heaven on assignment to different regions. Written on the swords were the words spiritual warfare in Their other hand was a bottle of oil containing the warrior anointing and emerged with the bridal revelation. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, these will be days of blood and fire. So my church must be prepared to war in prayer through intercession. I am sending my winds and ministers of fire to co-labor with the saints as they declare my word into the earth. Recognize that we're declaring the word into the earth. So our intercession is not coming from earth into heaven. Our intercession is coming from heaven into earth because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am sending my winds and ministers of fire to co-labor with the saints as they declare my word into the earth. For those that do not know me, this will be a time of great turmoil. A time of blood and fire. For my bride, it will be a time of great triumph, a time of blood and of my blood and my fire. Then I was shown a white horse and heard the, war, the Spirit of the Lord say, Prepare for manifestations of wars and the natural reaching greater heights in the coming days, as, we, as well as an increase of warfare in the realm of the Spirit. 
Have you not been feeling the warfare? Have we not been seeing a greater escalation of wars in the natural, in the earth? My bride must stay humble in the position upon her knees to gain ground in the air. Greater clashes of light and darkness are about to come. I will cause my bride to ride upon the white horse and she will leap over these dark days to a place of victory. The Lord also showed me that we are entering into a time of increased judgments and the glory of the Lord in the earth. I could see great clashes of light and darkness unlike what we have experienced in the past. Greater glory of the Lord was manifested with God's presence shining forth. Many will be saved through the outpouring that it will come. Seeds have been planted and now prayer will produce the rain to bring in the great harvest. That's where we're at right now. Signs and wonders will follow those that believe. The presence of the Lord will cause salvation in the streets. At the same time, natural disasters will come like never before in the earth. Mudslides, plagues, increase of hurricanes, sizable earthquakes, fires, droughts, volcanic activity will reach new heights in various regions in the earth like we've never seen in the past. I, I saw America and heard these words, Mayday, Mayday. And heard the spirit of the Lord say, for those that will call upon my name, I will be the prince of peace and the eye of the storm. There is something that is coming to America that is um, going to be uh, very, uh, it's going to shake this nation. And I keep praying, I keep asking the Lord about this, this May Day, May Day. But this, there is an attack coming. Uh, and we need to begin to pray. That was on August the 21st, 2022. Then on October the 22nd, 2023, uh, the Lord spoke this to me. He said, fear not, for I am opening the gates of the prophetic war room of intercession in the heavens. I am calling forth a mighty army of prayer warriors who will stand in the gap and break the power of the enemy. As you gather in unity and fervent intercession, I will release a supernatural anointing upon you to push back the kingdom of darkness. Know that this war room, you will receive strategies and insights. I will reveal hidden schemes of the enemy and expose his plans. Through your prayers, strongholds will crumble, chains will be broken, and the captives will be set free. My spirit will empower you to wage war in the heavenly realms, dismantling the works of darkness and the earth. As you align your prayers with my word, you will witness the manifestation of my glory. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and signs and wonders will follow those that believe. The enemy's grips will be broken and the light of God's kingdom will shine forth. Remember, this battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Therefore, put on the full armor and stand firm in faith. Let your prayers be fueled by love, compassion, and a heart for the lost. As you intercede, I will release a wave of revival and transformation upon the earth. So rise up, my bride. Enter into the prophetic war room of intercession. Trust me for victories assured. I am the Lord of hosts, and no force of darkness can withstand the power of my name. Go forth. I am with you always. This is just a few days ago that the Lord had given me this word, October the 22nd, 2022. So tonight we are going to talk about unleashing the power of the war room and prophetic intercession in heavenly places. I'm telling you that we are living in a time where darkness is attempting to take over the planet but the bride of Christ is going to shine forth his light in the earth and we are going to see great victories coming from 
the unseen and manifesting in the natural. Listen, share the broadcast again uh, with all of your friends. Let them know right now that the word of the Lord is going forth as we're discussing this. Now, let's talk about the the power of prophetic intercession. The role of the prophetic intercessor or the prophetic intercession is a powerful tool that allows us to partner with God in bringing his word into the, into the earth. It involves hearing God's voice, discerning his plans, and praying them into existence. Remember, we're not praying uh, in order uh, from a place of, of of attempting to get the victory, we're praying from a place of victory. We're not praying from earth, we're praying from heavenly places. And we have to have the mind of the Lord. We have to have the strategies and the blueprints. We have to have the war plans. And we, we don't come with the war plans. God gives us the war plans and then we begin to prophesy them. We begin to decree them into the earth. In the war room, we receive divine strategies and insights that enable us to pray with precision and effectiveness. We tap into the mind of God and declare the purposes over our nations, our communities, and uh, individuals, our our families, and our, our personal lives. Listen, we are warring for destinies of nations. We are warring for the destiny of the earth. We are warring... Uh, for our personal destinies. And when we're decreeing the word of the Lord, we are decreeing total victory and annihilation of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces and, and uh, of evil in the heavenly realms. We, in, uh, we are engaged in a spiritual battle. And intercession is our weapon of war. Come on, somebody. Your voice is a weapon. You have the word of the Lord inside of your mouth. We're not wrestling against natural governments. We're not struggling against uh, natural people's minds. No, we're, we're battling against demonic strongholds. And some of those strongholds have been placed in, the, in, in people's minds and they are uh, living in illusionary worlds that are created by demonic entities. And the only thing that is going to break that is the sword of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4 verse Uh, 12 talks about the word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword dividing asunder the soul and the spirit. There are things that are being planted in the souls of men. There are illusions and false narratives that only the word of God is going to destroy. That's why the enemy wants you to shut your mouth. That's why he wants to keep you silent. But in this year, 5784, the year of the door, and the decade of the mouth, a double door. I want you to see that, that this is a year that is a double door, that we are not going to close our mouth. We are not going to be silent, but we are going to release God's word into the earth because God has called us to stand in the gap and intercede on the behalf of others in this world. And where the enemy wants to bring destruction, he wants to bring despair, he wants to bring a world war, we refuse to stand and, 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 and bow our knee to the enemy and allow him to do it. No. The Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if my people who are called by name, my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will hear heal their land. Our prayers, listen to me, our prayers have the power to bring healing and transformation in the land. It is through our intercession that we can partner with God to bring about his purposes in the earth. We're not just standing idly by and just saying, well, it's the sovereignty of the Lord And whatever is going to be, is going to be. No. We understand the call of intercession. We understand the call to intercession. But have we fully understood the call to the war room? 
So let's talk about the prophetic war room. The war room is not a physical location, but it is a spiritual realm where intercessors engage in the battle through prayer and prophetic declarations. And we declare the word of God. We declare the word of God and what his word says, and his word says that we are victorious through Christ. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 reminds us that our battle isn't against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces. Our, war, the, our rural room is the place where we align ourselves with God's perspective and we engage in spiritual warfare. What is God's perspective? God's perspective is that we are more than conquerors. We are victorious through Christ, that we are overcomers by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. Revelation chapter four, verse one tells us, after this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice that I first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you things that must take place after this. The prophetic war room is a heavenly realm where God reveals his plans, his strategies. And there are so many secrets in that chapter of Revelation uh, 4. It isn't just that He saw the door. It isn't that he just heard the voice. The Bible says that he turned, and verse 2 says he turned. And and when that happened, he was suddenly in the spirit. He was in the spirit. In other words, he got caught up. See, you can't do intercession from a place of earth into heaven because your perspective will be wrong. You'll be battling to try to gain superiority and supremacy when in fact, if you turn, you'll be in, in, you'll be in the spirit. See that. This is a time of ascension. That's one of the reasons that I wrote my book several years ago, um, on ascension. Because this is a time of corporate ascension. This is not an uh, individual. This is, although we are individuals and we are powerful, this is, a, this is a time where God is bringing his bride into a corporate ascension. Because if one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. And we've been called to corporately go up. It's a play, the, the war room is a place of intimacy with God where we, def, we receive divine guidance and insights. And our declarations are powerful. Our decrees penetrate the enemy and... According to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, we have been given divine supernatural weapons, heavenly artillery to demonish strongholds. In the war room, we receive divine strategies to demolish the strongholds of the enemy. It is a place of spiritual warfare where we engage in the battle through prayer and intercession, but we are given the keys to launch God's supernatural divine artillery into the enemy's camp. One word from the Lord that is in the war room released upon the enemy, a one rhema divine word from heaven, can turn things in an instant. We have to have the mind of God. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares God. As the heavens are higher than your so are my ways higher than your, th- your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. We have to have the divine thought patterns of heaven 
when it comes to our prayers and what we are declaring. In the prophetic war room, we align our thoughts and ways with God's ways. It's a place of surrender and submission to God's will, allowing him to lead us and guide us. This is the prophetic war room. It is the place where we begin to get the mind of Christ and the understanding of what's happening in the earth, even things that are coming in the future, so that we can begin to bombard the planet with heavenly declarations to break the satanic war machine that is marching against humanity. Oh, I hope that you are getting this today. Because our position is not in our prayer rooms crying out to God to save us, to come rescue us. Our position is in Christ. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 tells us that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Our position grants us authority and access. Our position grants us authority and access into the heavenly war room through prayer, fasting, intercession. We activate, participate in the battle against the enemy schemes. We declare God's truth. We bind the works of darkness and release God's kingdom in the planet. There is a clashing of swords right now. A clashing of light and darkness. And you and I, as prophets, you and I, as prophetic intercessors, have to be on the front lines. We have to be engaging in this war, and this war is a war of victory. We're engaging it through prayer and fasting and intercession. We're not saying, well, you know, the sovereignty of the Lord is just allowing these things to happen. No, there is a darkness that's on the earth. And we must meet that darkness. The bride of Christ must meet that darkness with his powerful light. If this is the time of the open door, we need to understand that the Lord, according to Matthew 16, verse 19, has given us the keys to the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And so whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose in earth, on earth will be loosed in heaven. Stop there for a moment. Let's process this for, a, for just a few moments. We have been given the keys of heaven. And whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. That's why it's important for our perspective to be in heavenly places so that we properly can discern what needs to be bound, what needs to be loosed. Through our intercession, we have authority to bind the works of darkness and loose the power of God's kingdom. Through our prayers, we can partner with God in bringing about his will on earth as it is in heaven. Is that not what we are looking for? We are looking for open heavens. We are looking for the place where God's kingdom reigns. And because we are vessels, temples of the Holy Spirit, our region, our area, our city, our nations should be impacted by our prayers because we are carrying the portals of God's kingdom. And we have divine access to those keys. We have the divine access 
to lock out the enemy's schemes. We have the, the divine assignment to bind up demonic times and seasons and unleash kingdom assignments heavenly beings and God's kairos moments into the planet. Recognize that we are not, you and I as believers, seated underneath the satanic star system where we are just subjects to the manipulations of times and seasons, but you and I are called to live above that because the planetary planets, the star systems, the things that rule earthly times and seasons, we have not been made subject to but according to the book of Genesis, we are called to live above. And we're not called to live in chronological time periods. We are called to live in kairos moments of the Lord. We are called to live by the word of God. So we do not operate out of earthly earthly. Um, time period where the sun moon and stars dictate to us times and seasons we live in the heavenly perspective that we are ruled by the son of god that is that is something that i i want to get over to you and if you don't really understand that you should pick up my book on altars because i discuss this because there are uh, manipulations that happen within the star structures and the systems uh, that uh, um, allow those in the occult and Satanism and and and, and other um, hidden false religions to operate under and manipulate times and seasons that we live in and cause fear to come into the planet. But you and I have been called to live above that and release his heavenly light. One of the ways that we release heavenly light is by releasing the supernatural song of the Lord out of us. We see this in Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly... There was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and every chain was loosed. There was a supernatural groan that was coming out of Paul and Silas. There was a sound that was coming out of them that carried the frequency of heaven. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 that the earnest expectation of all creation is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And Paul goes on to tell us, he says, there is a groan that is in us later on in the chapter that can't even be uttered. It is, an, it is articulated articulated through the spirit, but it comes out of our physical body. The groan of the earth is met by the groan of the spirit and causes supernatural things to transpire, and the earth begins to respond to that. We see that in Acts 4, when they met together, the, suddenly the place where they were gathered were, was shaken. Physical things started shaking through spiritual vibrations that were happening in their spirit man. Oh, there was a warfare that was going on. And we see that in Acts 16, that Paul and Silas may have been locked in a natural prison, but they were warring in spiritual realms. 
and the power of their intercession, the power of the groan that was coming out of them, the power of the prophetic song that was manifesting through them began to cause the earth to respond in a physical way where the earth began to shake and natural prison doors began to break open. Our prayers can cause miraculous things to manifest in the planet, in the lives of ourselves as well as others. Let us recognize the power of intercession can bring supernatural breakthroughs, set captives free, break chains. Dare I say that even in the natural, the weapons of nations that are warfaring against other countries can be affected by supernatural intercession and things that seem to have an effect and locked in by technology and advancement of technology are are no way superior to the intercession and the technology of God's heavenly artillery. I want that to sink in tonight because your intercession can stop wars. Your intercession can bind the hand of the enemy. Your intercession can stop the spirit of death. Your intercession can bind the powers and the works of darkness. But there has to be a spirit of unity and love. And the keys to effective prophetic intercession are intimacy. They are unity and they are love. Prophetic intercession flows from a deep relationship with the Father. Spending time in his presence, studying his word and cultivating the heart of worship are essential for effective intercession. When we understand that we don't have to live underneath the time period, but we begin to discern times and seasons, then we can bring God's kingdom with kairos moments into that chronological time order and see it affected. Our intercession is led by the sensitivity of uh, 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 of the Holy Spirit and we discern spiritual climates and allow uh, align our prayers with God's divine timing. We don't prophesy or reaction. We're not reactionary prophetically to what we see happening in the planet right now. No, we already knew that these things were coming into the earth, and we've been praying already. We've been praying already. Your prophetic cannot be from a place of reactionary, nor can your declarations be from a place uh, of trying to react to what the enemy's doing. No, we have to have the blueprints and the strategies of heaven and speak according to his will to see the power of God come into the planet. This is where unity of intercession is so vitally important. The power of corporate intercession cannot be mis cannot be underestimated. When we come together in agreement, our prayers become a force that shakes the heaven and impacts the earth. Let me tell you something. I'm speaking to you tonight, all the all the intercessors, all of those that are called to prophetic intercession. All of those prophets and prophetic people, where are you aligned? What, what house are you aligned in? Well, Brother Charlie, you know, I just get all my teachings online. No, you should have a community. You should have those that you're locked in with. You know, you should have those uh, 
whether it's your church that you go to or the ministry that you're connected in with, that you're able to go and intercede in prayer, pray corporately together to see uh, things change in your community, in your, in your city, uh, in your state, in your nation, in the world. You should be aligned with a house that is a releasing daily intercession in the spirit of unity. I know around here at at the center, we're we're not a church, but we are an, uh, an apostolic and global ministry. And one of the emphases that we have here in Moravian Falls is prayer. It's been on our heart to raise up the standard of that Moravian oil and that lampstand to allow it to burn 24-7. And we're getting so close to pressing into the 24-7 model and we're excited about it. And I cannot wait to be able to say in 2024, we broke through, we're doing 24 hours every single day, seven days a week. And we are wanting to see a transformation in our region through prayer and intercession. And I want to encourage you where you live, press in, get an intercessory group, begin to, co- to co-labor with the church and the ministry that you're a part of. Show up for the prayer. Show up to intercede. Show up and get in uh, to alignment with what heaven's doing because that though these times demand us to be in a position to release the power of heaven into the earth. And the Lord doesn't want us to be a lone ranger. He wants to, us to be united. Psalm 133 verse 1 says, How good and pleasant it is when people, God's people, live together in unity. Unity among the brethren is essential for effective intercession. When we come together in love and unity, our prayers become more powerful. Now, I, I want to say that we unite around the supernatural power of God. Okay, you have to find believers that are like-minded with you. Notice even the book of Acts that they returned to their own company that were like-minded with them. Spiritual unity is not just unifying and watering down the gospel until there's no power in it. You know, we we can do, people, we can get together in your community and you can get with the different denominational uh, factions in your, in, in, in your city and you can unify, but what are we unifying around? Are we unifying around the supernatural power of God? Are we, what, where is the unity? The unity isn't up here. Watch this. If the unity isn't with the supernatural power of God, in, in, in the prophetic and in, 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 in apostolic, according to the book of Acts. The, and we have to, in order to have unity, we have to water down the power of God. That's not unity. And that, uni- and that is not going to produce anything. No, unification comes when we begin to say the word of God in the book of Acts is what we unify around. And I'm sorry if you don't believe in the apostolic, the prophetic, if you don't believe in the supernatural power of God, I can't unify with you uh, on unbelief. I can't unify with you around religiosity. I can't unify with you uh, on watering down the supernatural power of the Lord. I'm not going to unify with you on that. Uh, But I am going to unify around raising the dead, casting out devils, healing the sick, and releasing the power of heaven onto the planet. Come on, somebody. Set First Peter chapter four verse eight. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Love is the foundation for intercession. It is through our love for one another that we can intercede with compassion and empathy. Love is a key. 
But we can't, we can't love unrighteousness. We can't love religion. We can't love. I refuse to love something that is perpetrated and, 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 and is released by the enemy. No, I unify around the power and presence of Jesus, the love of Christ, the love of his word, the love of the supernatural, the love of that kingdom of God, the love that passes all understanding, the love that, that is so supernatural that has to be imparted by the Holy Spirit, a love that is the glory of the Lord manifesting on the earth. And we know that John 13, verses 34 through 35 says, And new command, I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so, uh, so you must love one another. By this, everyone knows that you are my disciples if you love one another. Our love for one another is a testament to the world of our, of our discipleship. It is through love that we can demonstrate the power and the reality of God's kingdom. So we know that love is a key factor in effectively manifesting war room strategies into the earth. But we can't love unrighteousness. We can't unify around the demonic. We have to unify it around the realm of heaven. This is why our prayer rooms should look like birthing rooms. There should be groanings of the spirit. There should be uh, an atmosphere that allows the supernatural to be birthed out of the believer without judgment coming forth from a spirit of religion. I want to admonish you. You got to kick Jezebel out. You got to drive the spirit of religion out of your prayer rooms. Unify this time with supernatural thought processes that are coming out of the kingdom of God. And allow the groan of the Lord to come out of you. Because there are going, there are, we're coming into a time where there is a flow of the Spirit and we're going to reach a place of such unity of the brethren and we're so united with Zion and that mountain that other mountains are going to be crushed. I want you to Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Man, I hope that this is encouraging you tonight, stirring you up. And if you don't, you say, well, Brother Charles, I don't really understand a lot of this that you're talking about. I pray that your eyes of understanding are opened. I pray that your spiritual ears are open and that you come into a deeper depth of revelatory information. I pray that the Lord would download you tonight a new language. That you would go from a place of infancy to spiritual maturity. That when terminology comes forth, that you are able to digest it. That you no longer have to live off the, off the milk of the word, but you can live in the mystery of God's kingdom. Some things, when we're teaching them, have to be caught. They can't be caught here in your brain. They have to be caught spiritually in your heart. And one of the things that's so problematic in the Western church is that when you really start talking about deep spiritual things, I mean, when I was talking about the star systems and those things earlier in the broadcast, some people were just tuned out because they don't even know what, what well, my, my church isn't talking about that. Well, possibly, 
it could be that the revelatory um, time period that you're in is four decades ago. And you need um, an upgrade in your capacity. Um, your, you need a, may, maybe you have some, you know, viruses. And you, need, and you need some, you need your software cleaned a bit. You need, you need your, you, 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 you need you need your 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 memory card uh, expanded. You can't go into the season with a revelation from 1990 on spiritual warfare. This is a new time that we're living in, and you have to have an upgrade. Isaiah chapter two, verse two. It shall come to pass. Let me say this. We are going from a time it shall come to pass to this is that. We're going to be able to look in the word of God and say, uh, the word of God says it will come to pass. Oh, oh, this is that. This is the time that we're living at. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Now the word hills there is the places of, it literally means in the Hebrew, places of illicit worship, illegal worship, demonic worship. God's kingdom is going to be exalted above illegal houses of worship. And the nations shall flow, or the word means burn, into them. And many people shall say, uh, many people shall go. The word go there is halek. That means up and down, to and fro. The word halek is the same word that is used to describe Enoch when the Bible says he walked with God. He halaked with the Lord. He went up and down to and fro throughout the earth. And they, and, and, and they shall go and say, come, let us go up the mountain of the Lord. Notice the language here is not let I go up, but let us, corporate ascension, corporate ascension to the mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. We will walk in his path. And in other words, we're going to walk in the way of righteousness. He's going to teach us his strategies. And out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, to the house of God of Jacob. What is the house of the God of Jacob? That's Bethel. The house of Jacob is the house of Bethel. Bethel is the open heavens. Bethel is the place where the angels are ascending and descending on assignment. D dare I say that Bethel is the heavenly place of God's war room. Say, Brother Charlie, how do you know that? Well, when I look in uh, Genesis 28, I see something very interesting. And, and of course, you know, those that are um, Destiny Encounters partners that are, you know, they track with us on a 
in our Legacy Academy, mo, uh, you know, your guys are understanding this language, the things that we're talking about. I don't usually go into this type of depth on just an open broadcast, but here we are anyways. And um, so we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to go uh, pretty deep here for a moment. But um, Genesis 28 says about Jacob in the, in Bethel, it says, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and top of it reached the heavens, and behold, angels of God ascending and descending on it. Behold, the Lord stood above it, says, I am the God of Abraham, your father, God of Isaac, the land that um, where thou liest, I will give thee as thy seed. And he goes on and talks about how uh, in verse 17, he was afraid and he said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Look at that. Verse 18, and Jacob rose early in the morning and took a stone in, um, that he had put forth his pillow and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel. So Bethel is the place where the angels are ascending and descending. But when you turn over to Genesis 32, where did the angels that were descending, where did they go to? Well, they went to a place called Mechaniam. And Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him and Jacob saw them and he said, this is God's host. In other words, this is God's angelic army. And he called the name of the place Mechaniam. And Jacob sent the messenger before him to Esau, his brother, uh, unto the land and the country of Edom. That is Genesis 32 verses 1 through 3. Mekaniam in the Hebrew means place of two camps. It means seen, unseen. It means humanity and it means angelic. What are you what are you trying to say to me, Brother Charlie? I'm trying to say to you that from Genesis 28 in the place of Bethel. That Bethel is the war room that releases the angels on assignment. And what were the angels going to do? They were going to make amends with Jacob's brother Esau and him. I'm pausing there for a moment because I'm leading you to something. I'm leading you somewhere. The angels were sent on assignment for what? Reconciliation. God's ho angelic hosts were sent on assignment from Bethel to McKinneyam and the and to bring what reconciliation so that when Jacob met Esau there would not be a confrontation of war but there would be a reconciliation of brotherhood it is though from the war strategy in heavenly places that as we unify together corporately and we begin to bring about the prophetic power of intercession, that we begin to allow the power of God's word to bring us into alignment with the atmosphere and the climate of heaven, which is unity, love, compassion, and restoration. 
And when we begin to flow from that position, what happens is God's angelic army is released into the earth. And where there was going to be natural confrontations, death, destruction, because of the unseen being released, instead of there being clashes of, dark, of darkness uh, uh, come overtaking in death, the spirit of death, being manifested, there was reconciliation that began to happen. Now, one more place tonight before I give you something to really take to prayer. Psalm 24. And remember, I, if you've been following, you've been tracking in earlier broadcasts that we've been doing, prophetic updates and other broadcasts that we've been doing, we've been talking about Psalm 23, been talking about different things that the Lord is showing us as we enter into 2024. It's going to be Psalm 24. Look at this, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart has not lift his soul to vanity or sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, the righteousness of God of our salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your hands. O you gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Even, be, even lift them up, your everlasting doors. The king of glory can come in. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of hosts or the Lord of the angel armies. He is the king of glory. Psalm 24 is where we are. And it is our responsibility as intercession, intercessors to align in the war room or the place of Bethel to release God's angelic army. Well, how do we do that? We lift up our heads. Be lifted up, O oh, you gates. Gates don't have heads. Listen to me. He's talking here about you and I as supernatural portals of the Lord that release God's kingdom into the planet. And he, and he is admonishing, what is this generation? This generation is a generation of Jacob. Just like Genesis 28, the angels were released on assignment to bring reconciliation between family, between a warring factions, and, and the gate of the Lord, the house of Bethel, the gate was open and the power of the Lord was released through powerful intercession that allowed the king in his glory to manifest in the earth. Why? Because the earth is Lord's full, uh, the 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 earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the people that, the, that dwell therein. Our prayer is for God to release his glory. Our prayer is that God would bring about a spirit of unity in that, in, 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 with our community so that there can be reconciliation of nations in the earth. Well, Brother Charlie, I just don't believe that that, that can, is possible. I don't believe that that can happen. Then you don't believe in the truth of the power of the declaration of God and his word 
when he says, I want to rebuild cities that are wasted. I'm finishing tonight with this. It is clear, it is clear the enemy's intention is to bring about a third world war. It is the enemy's intention to bring massive death and open the mouth of hell and release destruction. And you and I as prophetic intercessors have to begin to grab a hold of the revelation that God is giving in this hour and open our mouth wide and release in unity through the power of intercession and prayer. Angelic hosts to go forth and begin to break the demonic spell that nations are under at this time. To begin to bind say, the satanic war machine that is raging in the unseen realm. And war from a place of victory and unity to see reconciliation between nations and the stopping of destruction. This is why the number one prayer in the word of God is pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace. And I see that the Lord is picking up the shattered, broken places in the nations. And he's pouring the oil of heaven and the peace that passes all understanding and pushing back the satanic lies that have infiltrated the minds of mass murdering dictators in the earth. And so tonight, Father, we thank you for the power of your spirit coming upon your bride to begin to pray. And we release the angelic realm of heaven to go forth from the war room, the place of Bethel, and break the lies of the enemy in the minds of men that are satanically motiv motivated for destruction. Father, I ask you that you would silence the mouth of the adversary, that you would break down the war machines that manufacture lies to bring about destruction into the planet. We step into the war room of heaven. We push back the demonic agenda of World War III. And Father, we pray for the silencing of the accusations and satanic agendas Father, we ask you that you would bring about your supernatural unity. That there would be peace. Father, release your peace now. Your presence. We take a hold of the oil of the Lord. Release your power in the nations. Pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem, the Middle East. Silence the 
satanic war machine. It's raging. That demon. That pri- that prince of Persia may be bound in the name of Jesus. Father, push back the bear. The pow- the demonic agendas of communism. Lord, bind up the agenda of the dragon coming out of China that seeks to devour the island of Taiwan. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you would cause every crooked place to go straight. We release angels, warring angels on assignment with the sword of the Lord to cut through the war plans of principalities in the planet. We push back the agenda of demonic entities that would seek to fire arrows of destruction, cause catastrophes in the planet. We pray tonight for peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Friends, we are entering into trying times, but I believe we are, we are victorious through Christ and his power and his word. Our perspective must be from heaven's place and not from earth. We, we are on the victorious side. We are called to live in heavenly places, to battle from the, that position and release heavenly beings to bring about the agenda of heaven and the planet. God's agenda is reconciliation. God's agenda is peace. God's agenda is the glory of the Lord covering the earth as the water covers the sea. This is not a time of destruction, despair, but but the enemy wishes it to be and he wants it to be and he's pushing for that. And that's where you and I come in and we begin to understand the strategy of heaven is for his glory to fill the earth, the harvest to be reaped and Christ to be glorified. So friends, I hope you got a hold of this tonight. I want to encourage you, go through all the prophetic words that I've been releasing on um, YouTube. Please go and share those with your friends. It's important that we get the perspective of the prophetic word, but we take a hold of the prophecies. We also take a hold of God's word. We begin to war with the victory and the promises of God that the power of the Lord will be manifested. Remember, The Bible is clear in Isaiah 60 that it's a time to rise and shine and the glory of the Lord is is going to be revealed as a powerful prophetic declaration and prophecy not just that we can glean from as New Testament believers but recognize that that prophecy is also for the nation of um, the kingdom of Israel. There's going to be a rising and a shining and the glory of the Lord is going to be seen. we got to continue to pray. And we have to break this um, mirage of, well, this is just the end times and this is going to happen. No. Our perspective matters and we need to understand that we can push back the enemy's hand 
And that's what we are called to do as leaders. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity tonight. If you want to sow a seed into our upcoming uh, crusade in Pakistan, that would be so, uh, I would be so grateful. Uh, we have a three-day crusade coming up in the nation of Karachi. It's going to be our largest crusade that we've ever, ever done. Over a million people a night. We're believing God for a great harvest in the nation of Pakistan. And we know that it is God's, in God's agenda and his plan to see Karachi shaken by the power of the Holy Ghost, souls saved, the resurrections of the dead, and miracles manifest. And we believe that we're going to see the greatest miracle, which we'll see a million souls saved over three nights. You can help us with that. Sow a seed in the comment section of, of this, uh, of this um, video. There is a link. It's the only link where you can sow and give to the Ministry of Destiny Encounters and help us with that powerful crusade that we have upcoming. Please uh, consider doing that. Also, you can consider becoming a partner of Destiny Encounters, monthly partner of Destiny Encounters, and that would be a tremendous blessing to us. We love you so much. Hey, listen, come and see me. I'm gonna be in Portland. I'm gonna be a lot on the West Coast the next two weeks. Portland, Oregon, I'm coming to you, and Seattle, Washington, I'll see you very soon. Get on our website, find out the locations where we're going to be, come and get in the atmosphere of the meetings, come and dive into what God is saying. Hey, you never know, God might speak prophetically to you, and you might have a life-changing experience by getting in those atmospheres. Listen, I love you. We love you. We're praying for you here at Destiny Encounters. We know that these are challenging times, but you are victorious in Jesus Christ. Listen, we'll talk to you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.